Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John and I are speaking with Dr. Liz Lister about all the things that affect people, well, a lot of the things that affect people over the age of 50 and uh, how to navigate feeling better. Yep. Especially during the holidays, Dr. Liz. Good to see you. Likewise. Thank you. Now, holidays are here. Um, you know, they start early. <laughs> I think they started at Halloween or maybe. Yeah. yeah. And um, they're, they're going to last beyond the first of the year. That's at mm -hmm. least they do in our family. And that means for me, I'm going to be eating pies and cakes and cannoli. Love cannoli. You know, so I know, I know that my blood sugar is going to spike. And I, I can't take, I can't double up my medicine. What, what should we do to control our blood sugar during the holidays? All right. That's just great. I love it. I'm just picturing those cannolis. I, I get it. <laughs> Well, I want to make a couple of suggestions to you that our listeners can also apply to their lives. Because really, I think that this time of year, it's it's so difficult to eat well. Yes. I, I just think it's our environment is more full of candy. I mean, the stores, the, the giant vats of candy. I'm, I'm seeing it like they're getting more and more creative. At yeah. the store the other day, I saw in the bulk section, you know, where they have like the 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 different nuts. Do you know what I'm talking about? In the bulk yes, section yes, of yes. the grocery store, right? So they had a bulk set of bins of the candy. So instead of the big, large bags of Halloween sized candies, the little mini size, they were big bins. Oh, so sure. you could pick and choose and and there were people just going through them. I was like, okay, that's new. That's new. I've not seen it quite that way before. So they're really working hard to make sweet stuff more and more accessible and available to people. So there's a few things you can do. One tip I always give is when you're going to an event, don't go there hungry. Yes. Have some type of snack before you go. I have personally experienced this. I'm hungry, I'm not going to make my best choices. Good point. I'm usually going to eat the first thing that I can <laughs> because I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but by the way, you don't mean that you should have a piece of pie uh, before you go to, to fill up on it. Okay, I'm not even saying don't have a piece of pie. Let's go to my second tip. Second tip is eating with protein. And this is not just at the holidays. This is all year long. Eating protein with carbs or other sugars always stabilizes the release of that sugar into your body. Mm. So, for example, I haven't done this in a really long time, but I'm aware that people will have, for example, a piece of cheese, a piece of pie. Yeah. Have you heard of that? Am um, I not quite, but yeah, it's all kind of they put out yeah. they put out the pie and the cheese plate, and then yeah, you got to pick your own. Yes. You have to be smart enough to choose. Yes. Exactly. So generally speaking, a good way to keep blood sugar steady is to eat small, frequent meals throughout the day. I have for many, many years made a habit of having a good breakfast on Thanksgiving, for example. All right. Mm -hmm. So Christmas Day, any day that you know you're going to have a big family meal, and be There'll be more food available than you normally have at a table when you sit down to have a meal. So on that day, make sure, again, that you don't arrive famishedly hungry. And also, so for example, my standard breakfast for many years uh, has been some like an oatmeal with protein powder in it. Hmm. So that's always an easy one. All right, easy to digest. And I'll usually have that for breakfast. And then knowing that we're going to have some sort of Thanksgiving meal. That, that's my example. But that can be applied in any way. Is eating smaller meals with protein. Each time you eat, make sure there's some protein with that meal or snack. Excellent. Mm. Good. Yep. Works really well. And it slows down that blood sugar entry into the body, which then calms down the insulin response. Insulin is what makes us gain weight. Huh. 
Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yes. So, there, so there's actually, this is sort of intertwines with a whole bunch of other things we've already discussed and will continue to discuss, especially with the uh, uh, the popularity of uh, uh, the uh, things like, uh, well, we did a whole thing on something that ended with the name lewd, uh, not as an L-E-W-D, but L -E -U, so, so mega lewd or something, Ozempic and things like that. Oh, semaglutide. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yes. those are becoming very popular for not just controlling sure. diabetes or your blood sugar, but uh, as a dieting tool as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I think that what's important here is that year round for those of us who are not dealing with those kinds of injections or pills or what have you, is that uh, by having protein or a big meal in the, at the beginning of a day uh, for breakfast, it will help us uh, make you feel more full and therefore you won't totally pig out on all the desserts. Yeah. Uh, uh, That's right. And I've never found it very right. useful to take just a little bit of each one because you want to then go back and, and make sure that you didn't miss the taste from a larger slice. So that never worked for me in the past. <laughs> I, I have a tip That's that I want to add. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. I, I, my tip is real simple. It's take some home for leftovers. Mm. That's Don't a wonderful it all. tip. I love take it. it home. I love it. I love it. That's really great. Oh, that reminds me of something really great. I think we've talked about blue zones in the past. And one of the blue zones, areas around the world where people routinely live into their 90s and 100s in good health, good yes. brain health and body health. And one of the things that they do is they stop eating when they're 80% full. 80% full. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This is in particular in, uh, in Okinawa, Japan is one of the blue zones and they talk about uh, stopping 80 percent full. So that might be easier said than done. But I have another tip that goes with that. So when you're at a big meal and there's a buffet. All right. Or as you're making me think that there are just a lot of plates being passed around. A good way to manage your total calorie intake is to serve yourself one plate. And I'm with you. I like to do that as well. We were at a dinner recently and we did that. It was a potluck. People brought all kinds of delicious looking things. So small taste of all kinds of dishes. That was really fun. But if you are watching what you're eating, if you want to be able to manage your total intake and there's a buffet situation, that's my tip for that, is to serve yourself one plate. You know is the servings and size of servings that you want to eat for that meal, and that is your meal. You don't go back for more. And it's also difficult when there's people roaming around, giving you more food. Yeah. That's when you lose track. <laughs> you don't know how many of those little small items you ate, yeah. those yeah. gorgonzola stuffed dates. Yeah. Those were all the nibbles <laughs> yeah. that we were at. Well, I have, yeah. I have one last suggestion uh, from uh, the two old guys, uh, from one of the two old guys, from half of the two old guy team, which is uh, start your exercise program uh, and increase it significantly for a week or two before the party and try to dump five pounds because for most of most of the people in our audience, these are all well and good, and maybe two or three people will have enough discipline. Uh, uh, particularly, I think uh, having a, a big meal uh, for breakfast before you go to that Thanksgiving dinner is a great idea. Uh, but you know, when once you're there, that you know the, the the turkey and the mashed potatoes and the sweet potatoes with all the butter in it, and you know you're not going to be able to stay away from it. So I would try to lose five or six pounds up front. And, uh, and then when you put on all that extra weight, uh, maybe it'll only be two or three pounds from where you really started. Anyway. Well, I will say that that tip would work better for men than it would for women. Really? Unfortunately, yes. It's, it, it is that easy oftentimes for men to make small adjustments and be able to lose those few pounds for women. I agree. In other words, tune up before the season begins. I think that's a great suggestion. I have one more tip as well. 
related to alcohol. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. This is another one with family get togethers, cocktail parties and work events, etc. So for those who are listening who drink alcohol, it, it's really remarkable that alcohol calories are they have more impact than carb or protein calories almost as much of an impact as fat calories wow. it's just the way our bodies process alcohol and of course everyone's different and has a different threshold however what my tip is is treat drinks like they are a dessert you're having another dessert yes yeah, and again, maybe not that easy during the holiday time, but when you limit yourself to a, a dessert treat to twice a week, that means that your dessert calories are about 5% of your caloric intake for that week. Okay? Yeah. So it's a little bit of a, a little guideline to go by. But again, just keep in mind that drink is, especially if it's, eggnog or something really more <laughs> something mixed with something sugary yeah then it really is definitely more like a dessert so that's something to keep in mind as well good point good point great great advice yeah and by the way with all this bar humbug stuff uh that dr liz has just shared with us uh eat drink and be merry for more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.